Hey everyone, welcome back to Film Talk. I'm Eliana Melendez, and today we're going to be sitting down with Eva Husson, the director of the upcoming film Mothering Sunday. Mothering Sunday had its premiere last year at the 74th annual Festival de Cannes, which Josie and I were very fortunate enough to be able to attend. And now the movie is finally having its US release on the 25th of March, so this Friday. For those of you who don't know, Mothering Sunday is a romantic period drama starring Odessa Young and Josh O'Connor and is set in 1924 and takes place over the course of Mother's Day and it just oozes the female gaze. It's a very sensual film. Um, it talks about love and life, memory, grief and loss and it's just it's it's just a really nice balm to the soul when it comes to just just women. Women! I was fortunate enough to be able to sit down with Ava today and talk about the film, talk about her process, um, the the visual and, and narrative choices that she made to really just paint something really just beautifully sensual and picturesque with Mothering Sunday and it's just, I, lo I love listening to creators' processes when it comes to films, especially women behind the camera, and I hope that you guys love it too, so let's get into it. Thank you so much for sitting down with me. Um, my first question is, though you've directed several feature films and even television in recent years, I saw that your career began in acting, actually. Were you always drawn to being behind the camera, or was that something that you discovered as your career went on? Um... So my parents were like uh, great cinephiles. So I grew up with like tons of films at home and you know, I would watch like very, um, like very serious films very early on. Like they didn't really have a filter, you know, it was like the nineties. So it was just like, go for it. Um, so I think I developed a taste for like films very early on. And then I was scouted in the street when I was 14, made three feature films. And um, I was cast as uh, to play Isabelle Huppert's daughter in a film because I really looked like her at the time. I was uh, I was quite a redhead when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. And um, and then after a year of rehearsal, we like the director like Isabelle Huppert dropped off the project, and the other actress was blonde with blue eyes and. I, you know, like they chose another actress who was blonde and blue eyes and it broke my heart. And I was like, yeah, I'm not made for that job. Um, and I had been going to drama school and everything. And every time that there was some, somebody giving me directions in drama school, I remember being like, this is so much bullshit. I know how to do this better. And it was, it's just funny how you go about those things at 18. So I decided to become a director when I was 18. Looking back on it, I was just, I just it's just bizarre like how set I was on this and I was just very clear and I just never really changed you were determined you, you had your passion and you were determined right on that path yeah and I and I was like you know acting I could like I could have like sort of kept on pursuing acting I just, I just could not be bothered um mm -hmm. it, it was uh, I was just much more challenged I guess by the directing side of things and I'm very happy because, you know, it's just bizarre when you think about it, like, I'm in my 40s now and, and actresses in their 40s are considered old, which right. is just mind-blowing because that's basically when men have the most um, active part of their acting career. Mm -hmm. And men after their 40s, they sort of, they start getting scouted. Um, mm -hmm. And when you're a director, when you're when you enter your 40s you're like a young director for another 10 years um my next question is um mothering sunday obviously very tender beautiful love story um and it revels in feminine sensuality um visually and narratively what was your process when crafting those two elements to deliver such a cohesive film um well, I guess I guess the the narrative points were so clear that it sort of infused the visual side of things. Uh, you know, it's a film about memory. It's a film about um, gender, social, and race struggles, uh, and everything sort of 
is very organic and stems from um, an aesthetic of the 1920s and 1940s also. So I mm -hmm. sort of infused with, like there were a lot of things that I was aware of in terms of the intellectual life, you know, 1920s, like there's a renewal of the intellectual life after the, the, the shock of the First World War. You have the Bloomsbury Blums group in, in, in England, you have the Surrealists in France. There is a thirst for um, a new way of telling the world. Um, you know, Mrs. Dalloway is published in the early 1920s, and um, it's it's this hot postmodernist, um, postmodern um, vision of the world where you know the First World War creates complete chaos, collapse of the old ways, and mm -hmm. people have to rethink the world and its meaning and chaos. So. It's hyper fragmented. It's a search for meaning. It's exactly what the movie is narratively, you know. It's mm -hmm. fragmentation mm -hmm. that creates meaning by the way it's interwoven. Um, so it fits completely the moment that it talks about. And you really get to have like such um, an adic like a like a, an adequation between form and content. Uh, that was that was quite the joy to be able to explore that as a filmmaker. Love that. And it, you can definitely tell. It's just the, the whole movie, the production design to every shot is just oozing with that that aesthetic and that look and that um, drive for something new. Um, as well, you know, you mentioned the, the film is about memory and it also deals, it tackles a lot with um, grief and loss, especially in that historical context of, of the World War. And it does so through a dual perspective from the same protagonist. Um, and though it, Mother and Sunday people will think that it's just a, a romance movie, what, what would you say that the great romance here really is? Is it really Jane Fairchild herself loving life? Or is it, you know, between the two great loves of her life, which are the two men in the movie? Well, I think that's something interesting, yeah, because I think the great romance is between her and her capacity to create. She's she's an artist who discovers that losses are part of the process and there's no, she wouldn't have it any other way. That's what, you know, all the Jane basically says to the journalist, you know, it was, the task was impossible, but it was wonderful. And I really, really relate to that, um, being an artist myself. I, you know, it's just something that I've come to accept. Um, it's not easy to accept, but the, the fact that, you know, whatever tragedy we go through makes us more humble and more in touch with people's difficulties in life. And if we don't go through that process of becoming more and more human, which is not very interesting, um, I think. And also it just, especially as women, just gives us a lot of strength to stand on our own two feet and not, um, that's what I love about the, the film. It's, yes, you know, it takes love into account in the sense mm -hmm. that it does not deny the power of love. It doesn't deny the extraordinary depth it has, but it doesn't, it tells you that you're something so much bigger than your relationship to a man. You're something so much bigger than um, you not being able to stand on your two feet if you don't have a man next to you. It's, um, it's just part of, it's like the cherry on the cake, you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. incredible and it's beautiful, but it's just, another factor of the whole picture, you know, like another element of the full picture. Yes, the picture, it, there's so many layers to it that those are just, you know, when I first saw it um, last year, it was, I, I have to see it again and again to just get something new out of it because there is so, there's so much at play in in such little time for a feature um, that it's just, it's it's very beautiful when a movie does that, when you can see it again and again, and you always get something new. I, that's how I feel with Mothering Sunday. 
Thank you. I really, that's something that I talk a lot with my production designer. It's like, it's the kind of film that you can and you should watch different times. And um, when that happens, I want people to be able to spot things that they had not seen before, like mm-hmm. details that, you know, give you even more information about the, the, the narrative. For example, it was something very simple. I um, we changed the color of the flowers in the background when Odessa Jane is in in the bedroom because I wanted to convey that idea that memory is unreliable and it's okay and it's not about the truth it's about how you remember things and that's what is important you know memory is performative in the sense that a memory is not a set um piece of information like you know neurobiology right. explains that to you nowadays it's a reinterpretation of a set of data that is not still that is not uh, completely um pinned down and therefore memory is always a present it's actually not something in the past and it's, uh, you know, like the, the, the fact that the flowers are, this, are not the same color, that, uh, you know, sometimes you go back to detail and you're not quite sure it's the same word or the same angle. Um, it was quite a blast. That's wonderful. And to not take too much more of your time, I will close. Um, again, with the Mothering Sunday is just beautifully shot with the female gaze that that was also something that really stood out to me the way the sensuality and the sexuality of the scenes was shot so delicately um and sincerely do you think that the industry as a whole is moving more towards being confident portraying that female gaze and being unafraid to portray the feminine Oh, I think definitely, you know, like it's, it's even gotten like better in the six years since I've started with Bang Gang. Um, I, I think for me, one of the big differences between the male gaze and the female gaze is that the female gaze explore nudity, not mainly for the sensuality of, of, of it, but for the intimacy of it, because nudity mm-hmm. is actually a big symptom of our relationship to intimacy and I think that's why it was so important to have those you know long scenes with the two of them talking naked because Mm -hmm. you know that's my experience of intimacy you know it's a lot of times like the nakedness is not so much about the sex you know it's like 10% of the time uh, that you that you get naked with your partner like the rest of it is um, just about a level of trust and comfort and abandonment and uh, I think it's very important for female and males alike, females and males alike, to have access to that representation, to have the representation of nudity not trusted, not like completely um, occupied just by pornography, where it's about performance and mm-hmm. about the theatrics of the performance. The reality is like really different from right. you know, our of intimacy and nudity is very different from pornography but if traditional filmmaking keeps too far away from that it's going to be very hard for us to have a meaningful mirror of our own experiences and a lot of people you know I, I hear a lot of people for example in in their 20s and 30s talk about how pornography has affected their own relationship to like their love life and their sex life in the sense that it's shaped what's normal to them and they've mm-hmm. lost touch with their own experience of it. Um, so right. I think films have to invest that space and, and like really, you know, um, give us mirrors basically to, to what we go through because it's important for us to digest and process and normalize it truly normalize being vulnerable and intimate in such a way and i think that's that i we need more films like that to rather like you mentioned the performance of sex is is not just that it's something that's far more powerful and i think you know what better way than to show that than through film um but thank you so much for sitting down with me um i can't wait to see the movie again <laughs> and um just 
I lo- I love your work. I really appreciate what you've been doing with uh with film, and I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you so much, Anna. Have a great day. Bye. You too. Thank you, everyone.